Welcome back to Sub-Zero Hero, where things are going not that great, if I'm brutally honest. We've ironed out some of the problems from last season, but in doing so, well, we've created some brand new problems and some troubling things going on behind the scenes. The finances are looking pretty bleak and some of the players are making noises I'm not too keen on. We're closer to the relegation zone than we are the playoff positions and I'm not saying the vultures are feeding on us, but they're certainly starting to circle. So here is the financial position at the club and it's not looking great. We're a shade over our wage budget. We're £330,000 overdrawn. And unless you go on very deep cup runs in Norway, there doesn't seem to be a great way of drawing in a whole lot of income with just a 26-game season. You've only got 13 home games. The attendances you get for them are not that high. There's no prize money attached to the league. So we've already been knocked out of the cup this season. I fear our finances are going to continue to deteriorate all the way until the start of the next campaign. If we're even here, we've got some worrying signs going on in the team dynamics. An awful lot of the players now are starting to make noises about thinking the time might be nigh for them to move on to a bigger club. So our leading centre-back Tobias Vibe at the age of 31 is thinking he might want to finish his career somewhere else. Our right-back comes central midfielder Andreas Loveland at the age of 29 is thinking the same. Our first-choice keeper, Adrian Mickelson. Similarly, he's starting to consider whether he should be looking to move to a bigger club. The same for our talismanic target man, Vibjorn Grunvold. Even for our left winger, um, here he is, Adrian Pedersen. He's thinking whether he should be looking to move to a bigger club as well. I mean, the idea of a youth development save is that eventually you should be moving these players on and bringing through the youngsters, but without these leading lights... I don't think we survive in this dis in this division. The youngsters are just not ready yet. So this is a little bit of a concern. Let's show you how things have been going in the league so far this season. It's a decidedly mixed bag. We got the season underway in the last episode with a nil-nil draw. And we bounced into life with a great cup win. A 6-2 win in the league. Followed by a 4-2 win over Kelsius. And things were looking great. We were then drawn against our cross-town rivals Tromsø in the Cup, a team who are in the Premier Division in Norway, but we played them in the last three pre-seasons and beat them each time. But wouldn't you know it, that counted for nothing when it came to a real competitive game. They came to our place and beat us 4-2. We then lost to Vullerenga's second team. They are competitive this year. So I wasn't panicking, but I certainly was over the next few games. We went down 3-2 to Gruru despite being 2-0 in the lead inside 10 minutes. So that was a complete collapse. We could only draw 1-1 with Senya who are towards the bottom of the table. There was no disgrace in losing 3-2 to Moss I suppose. They are running away a little bit with the league this season. And then we managed to bounce back a little bit. A 1-0 win against Lurdenskog. A 1-0 win against Skeed who are right up there near the top of the table. And things have gone off the boil again. We went to one of the other clubs struggling near the foot of the table, Struman, and we lost 2-1. Two, 2-2 two, two draws against Hood. 2-2 two, two draws against Kavik Holden. It's not been brilliant. It's left us so far with four wins, four draws, and four defeats. And if we go back into that table, well, we can see how things have changed from last season. So far this campaign, we've scored 23 goals. Only the team at the top of the table has scored more, but we've now shipped 19. We compare that to last season, we only scored 27 in the whole of the campaign last season, but we were pretty tight at the back, only conceding 23. Well, this season, it's a completely different story. So, Oh, well, we're going into today's game, and we're playing the team at the bottom of the table in Bratvorg, and... My goodness, do we need a win. We've tweaked our tactic just a little bit, pulled one of the wingers back down into a more conventional left wing position. Perhaps the other shining light we've had so far this season is that 
Bendik Matthiasen's come into the team and in 12 starts he's scored nine goals. He's the second top scorer in the Norwegian second division. Other than that, we've not really had any standout performers. And today we're going to get out there against Bratfog. And my goodness, do we need a win that's going to revitalise our season? Here we go then. We are the home team. We're playing the bottom of the table side. It's never a comfortable day for us when we're playing one of these lower ranked sides. We've been tweaking the tactic as we've been going, trying to find a formula that both scores and makes us look solid at the back. I'm not sure we're there yet. I am finding this challenge particularly tough, if I'm honest. Here we go with an early corner, though. This could settle the nerves. If Grunvall gets in, he doesn't. But he at least flicks one across the goal. And our young centre-half, Henrik Hansen, has prodded one over the line. He's had to morph through his marker to do it. But we will ignore that Star Trek manoeuvre. In fact, we'll thank the FM gods for it. Yeah, we are struggling to develop our youngsters. Being a part-time team means that we're only training twice a week, even at youth level. We're finding it difficult to consistently raise their attributes. That's definitely something we're going to have to carry on experimenting with. As Hansen, the centre-half, has volleyed home a second for us. Well, this is an awful lot better. We're relying on the set plays to do it. Maybe we've progressed from Allardyce to Poulis, but we'll take this. That is a heck of a volley from a centre-half. And inexplicably, that young man's now on his hat-trick. OK, three shots, three on target. We're into the highlights again. Are we going to get counted on, or could this be for us? Here's Loveland. Slotted it at right back for much of this season. There's our man on a hat-trick playing a lump ball forward. Loveland's pretty advanced here, isn't he? We've got plenty of players in the box. If we can get it in, it's a lumped ball into the box rather than anything more delicate. And I think we were offside for that. Certainly, this is making the table look a bit better, though. Here's another set play. Bendixon has drifted one wide. But Grunvald's got the long throws going now. He's looped one in. We've got a man up. Oh, the keeper has come and claimed it. I'll take 2-0 at the break, to be honest. When we have had this kind of lead in previous games, we've then given it away again, even when we've pulled out our more defensive tactic to try and see out the games. I would dearly like not just a comfortable win, but maybe even a clean sheet from this game, just to get everything ticking along nicely. Here's Leesvold, who this season has moved out onto the right-hand side so we can bring in a player who's a little bit quicker to play as our poacher. And there is that player, Bendik Matthiasen, pace 13, acceleration 13. Leesvold's playing as an inverted winger, but he's naturally right-footed, so a lot of the time he'll go outside as well. And he set up a few goals for Matthiasen, and I reckon that is that boy's 10th goal of the season. Not bad. 3-0 at halftime and we're back into the highlights. At 3-0, I'm still not feeling completely confident, if I'm honest, even against the bottom of the table side. I was like a fourth or a fifth goal lead. Before I really feel confident, I can see them getting one or two back and making it a very, very nervous game where we're clinging on using our Janet Jackson formation. Sitting on the sidelines like Sam Allardyce and there's the first of those goals back. Opened up a little bit there, weren't we? OK, well, it's all game back on then, isn't it? And the next goal becomes pretty important. This is just a, a ball to a guy who's just marauded through the middle completely unmarked. And now it's 3-1. Still got 10 minutes until the break as well. This could be a draw by half time. This is why you don't get carried away watching this team. Here comes Leesfold. I feel like we need two more to be comfortable. There's one of them. They're certainly raining goals. This is different to last season, isn't it? Nil-nils we were showing you last season, maybe. If it was an exciting game, we'd lose 1-0 late on. I reckon this is more goals in one half of football than we've shown you in maybe the previous season. All right, you can't say you're not getting... 
Well, you don't pay any money to come here, but you can't say you're not being entertained. We're being quite efficient, aren't we? We've got six shots on target. And we've scored four of them. Oh my goodness. Okay, we need a careful team talk now because I can still see this ending in a 4-4 draw. So we're going to go away. We're going to put the kettle on. We're going to have a chat with the boys. We'll see you for the start of the second half. And here we go. We're underway for the second half. We gave them the old don't let your performance drop team talk. Everybody was motivated by that bar Bendik Matiasen, who scored two goals. I think he was hoping for a little bit of a pat on the back. He didn't get it. He didn't respond well to it either. I was tempted about just dropping the mentality down to balanced for the second half, but I don't want to invite pressure from a team that's itching to try and get back into the game. So we'll stay positive, see how the rest of this game goes. Maybe drop it if we concede another goal. And talking of conceding, here they go with the highlight of their own. They've drifted one in. We've got it clear. Grunvol with strength of 20 can't hold on to possession. Who knew? But he's dropped deep and got the ball. He's going to use his pace to give the ball away. Nice. He's perhaps not having his best season, Grunvol, but certainly still one of our best players. We want to keep him at the club. We'd also like him to get on the score sheet as well. Matthiasen's a good six foot one as well, I reckon. So we've got a bit of aerial strength in there. Can we get it now and show it? We can. It's least follow. I think it's five foot nine coming in as the inverted winger. But not getting on the end of things. Okay, I think it's time to have just a little shuffle around in the tactics. Maybe a bit of fresh personnel just to see us to the end of this game. Okay, we have made a little bit of a tweak. We have dropped down to balance. We've brought two fresh players on. Grunval was looking pretty tired there. So we've brought Matthiasen over as the target man, as the six foot pluser. And we have bought on Gabriel Anderson as the poacher now. We've not seen an awful lot in this second half, to be honest. After the run of form we've been on, I'm not going to knock it. 4-1 would be our best result in quite some time. If we could get another and turn it into a, a really convincing performance, then that might just set us up. Leesvold has escaped his man. Matthiasen on a hat-trick has volleyed one over the bar. All right, things have calmed down a little bit now. The XG looks good. Plenty of shots. We've controlled the second half. We've not let them back in. I'm going to say that is a little bit of a relief of a performance. We're getting towards injury time. Least false scampering after it. I'm not sure who this highlight's going to be for. 4-2. Wouldn't look quite as good, would it? Hopefully. We can keep them at bay until full time. Come on, we need some winners here. We've got some pretty tired players. But they're working pretty hard and we are away. And here is the sub Anderson. He's in. Can he finish? He can't even get his shot away without it striking a defender. Disappointing. Still, he's another player we're developing. I think he's still only 22. Might end up being a more regular starter while we're waiting for a young striker to come to the fore from the under-19s and really threaten for a first-team position. We've got a minute to go. We've hooked one clear. And here is Anderson again. Can he beat his man? He can. He's got a little bit of pace. He's got support in the middle if he can hold it up. He can't. He's been fouled, has he? By a player on a yellow card? All right, what can we do? A little bit of gloss to finish the game. We've swung it in. We have got that little bit of gloss. And that is Anders Hansen's third goal of the season. And all of them have come in the last 91 minutes. Well, if you were going to say that this was going to be a 5-1 win with a hat-trick being scored, I reckon our centre-back Hansen would have been quite far down my list of tips. He's turning into the Norwegian second division, Steve Bruce. We're going to have to get him on the penalties next. And we're off again. Still got a bit of time. Matthiasen's got... He's got Anderson up with him. If he can sling it across, he can't. There's not enough time. I'm going to give that a little fist bump, you know, because 5-1, granted, against the team bottom of the table, that is definitely a relief considering how we've been playing recently. 
That is not a result that was necessarily on the cards. I reckon we're going to say that we are pretty happy with that, both in terms of the result and the performance. And well, that does make the league table look a little bit better. Skeed haven't played yet. They've still got a game in hand, although I was tracking the results and Skeed did lose their last game, I think. And we're only now five points behind that playoff place. I mean, Moss drew today, but they are looking imperious at the top of the table. Vullarenga's second team are good, but they can't get promoted. Hence why Skeed in third have got that playoff position. We need to go away and put an awesome run of form together now. Otherwise, we're going to be looking at scrapping, trying to get a fourth season in the Norwegian third tier without really making a whole lot of progress. If we could just go on an awesome run now, I'd like to hunt down Skeed and at least have a little shot at that playoffs. Best play laid plans normally for me don't come to fruition. We're going to go offline, play a few games. We're going to come back and hopefully... We're going to be coming back to a little bit of excitement in the promotion race as we're trying to become a sub-zero hero.